the Pinewood Derby race, the most important race of your Cub Scout career. This video is going to take you through ways that you can make the fastest Pinewood Derby car possible, and it's all going to be based on physics. Your kit doesn't come with very much. All it comes with is, well, pine brick, four wheels, and four nails. This video is going to take you through five main steps that you can take to improve the speed of your car. All these steps are going to be cheap, they're going to be easy, and they're all going to work because they're based on physics, and we're going to explain them as we go along. First in this video, we're going to cover the aerodynamics of your car. And step two, we're going to cover the wheel wells that you can make in your car. Three, we're going to cover the mass location. Four, we're going to talk about polishing your axles. And five, we're going to finally talk about raising a wheel of your car. Now let's break down the physics. Your car on the track only starts with gravitational potential energy. The equation looks like this. You start with potential energy, gravitational, which is the weight times the height. That's going to turn into kinetic energy, which is half the mass times the speed squared, plus friction, which is just heat. We want to turn as much of this potential energy into kinetic energy, because kinetic energy is ultimately what is going to win the race, because it makes your car go forwards. First, we're going to cover the aerodynamics of your car and why they're important. When you just have a block of a wood car, your air is going to flow into it and hit it straight on. This causes the effect of friction, or as you can see, there's a lot of friction when it's a flat surface. If you have a more aerodynamic shape, which is like a wedge, when the air flows and comes at your car, only a little bit of that air is going to hit the front of it, and most of it's going to flow over the top. This causes less friction. Now let's throw it back to that equation we were using before. Remember, potential turns into kinetic and friction in our Pine Ruby car formula. If we reduce some of that friction by making our car more aerodynamic, that's going to put more energy towards the kinetic forward motion of our car. To make a more aerodynamic shape is pretty simple. You can do as much as you want, but I just made a wedge. You ultimately just want a car that has a slim profile that the air will flow over easily. Now two, we're going to talk about making a wheel well in your car to reduce the friction. Your average Pinot Ruby car has a wheel that's going to bump against the edge of the nail and the edge of the car. If you have a slimmer car, there's going to be less area where the wheel is bumping up against the car causing less friction. It's not as much surface area. So what you want to do is mark out a small area around where your notches are for your wheels. You're going to sand around these with a Dremel or some other tool so that it's slightly raised than the rest of the car. This makes it so that the wheel does not bump into the rest of the car but only on that small area. This is going to make your car go a lot faster. Step 3 is perhaps the most important step, and it's about the mass location on your car. Now again, if you remember our equation, we start with potential energy, and that turns into kinetic and friction. We want the largest amount of potential that we can have so that we can have more on the other side of the equation. Let's set up a scenario where we have two ramps and two cars, one with the weight at the front and one with the weight at the back. If we draw a line, we can see that the one with the weight at the back is going to accelerate because it's falling for a greater distance. This is going to cause a little bit more acceleration. If we graph these on an XY plane, this is because we can see that the one with the weight at the back possesses more gravitational potential energy. This is going to translate into more kinetic for us later. If we take a snapshot right at the crest at the bottom of the ramp, we can see that when the one with the weight at the front is no longer accelerating, the one with the weight at the back still has a little bit of room to accelerate. This gives it a little bit of a boost. Now we want to max out our weight at 5 ounces, and we want to do that about between 1 and 2 inches in front of the rear axle. I just used some spare bolts I found around the garage to use for weight, but you can use fancy, heavier, denser weights. Now in step 4 we're going to talk about polishing your axles. Now our friction in our equation, as you remember from before, is equal to the coefficient of friction times the weight at that point. Our coefficient of friction is simply the materials that we're using in the roughness. We're going to improve that. Our nail kind of has a rough surface, so if we make that smoother, it's going to glide a lot faster. The materials you'll need for this is a file, some sandpapers up to a 2000 grit, some kind of polishing solution, water, your nails of course, a cloth, and a drill. You're going to fasten one of your nails in the bit of the drill. First, you're going to put some honing solution, that's what I used, or some kind of polish on the front. 
Then start with a file and work your way down from a 220 grit to around an 800 grit to a 2000 grit so that it makes it very, very smooth when you're finished. You want to use the water and the honing solution as much as you can so that you make a really smooth surface. This may be a long and tedious process, but it'll be well worth it in the end and you'll be finished with four polished nails. Now we're going to talk about step five, which is a lifted wheel concept. Now remember our equation again. Potential turns into kinetic and friction. Well, that kinetic kind of has two parts. There's the forward kinetic motion of your car, and it's the rotational kinetic motion of your car. That's your wheels turning. Now the equations look like this. Your kinetic is half the mass times the speed squared, but your kinetic rotational is half the moment of inertia times the rotational speed squared. Now think about it, we have four wheels in the car and they all have to get going. Each needs energy to get going. If we take away one of those wheels, then only three of them need to get spinning, and that's more energy that can get, go towards the regular kinetic forward motion of your car instead of getting them spinning and using that inertia that goes towards rotational energy. That's going to get you to the finish line a lot faster. Now first put three wheels on your car. Put two wheels on the back and one wheel in the front. Doesn't matter which side you put the one in the front on. Now first put three wheels on your car. Put two wheels on the back and one wheel in the front. Doesn't matter which side you put the one in the front on. Now you could just leave one of the wheels off of the car, but this may be against your Cub Scout Troops rules, so you may have to have four wheels on your car. If this is the case, you want to score out the groove a little bit so that's a little deeper than all of the others. So that when you nail your wheel in the hole, it's going to be a little bit higher and it's not rolling like the other ones are. It appears as if you have four wheels, but only three of them are actually spinning. Once you're done with that, your car is finished. Put some graphite on your wheels and you're ready to race. You can do your paint job or whatever you want to your car. Thanks for watching this video. Good luck on your race day and please subscribe to my channel.